Welcome to From Chaos to Peace with Connie. My name is Connie Graf and I am your host. I'm here to explore with you, often solo and sometimes with a guest, how a few minutes a day can keep the chaos away. And with chaos, I'm talking about the physical, digital, social, financial, mental, emotional and spiritual clutter that can accumulate in our life and business. In every episode, I want to make you aware how clutter is so much more than you think and why I say that clearing your clutter is self-love. Well, hello, my friend. Welcome to the podcast. This is episode number 173. Thank you so much for allowing me back into your ears. So this episode is actually a rewind of last year's episode 122. And I wanted to talk about finances and financial clutter for two reasons. Reason one, it was just tax season and you might still be all stressed out about your business or private finances. And it might seem easier to let things slide even more than to address them after this stressful tax season. Also, there is a lot of shame around clutter and not understanding or not having control over one's finances. And you might feel deeply alone and as if you were the only person struggling with clutter and finances and shame. I know from my own experience isolates us. And I am here to tell you and talk about that this is not true, that you are not alone and that there are ways to address your clutter the physical, digital, and the financial clutter. And reason number two why I wanted to republish this episode from last year is that I have two awesome guest episodes about finances and financial clutter lined up for you. And so I felt it was really a good opportunity to remind you how there is actually such a thing as financial clutter, but also how physical clutter and finances are connected. And reason number three is I might be talking more about finances in the future or not just might. Most likely I will talk more about finances in the future. Clutter and finances are very connected. And maybe I have neglected a bit talking about finances since I started this podcast. So I will focus a bit more on finances again, because I feel it's very important, especially now in the economic environment we're in right now. So it's even more important to pay attention to finances. And I want to help you take the bejesus out of finances. It's literally not that bad. We can, we can do it. You can do it. I can help. With one of the guests coming up, uh, we will talk about the emotional clutter that comes with struggling with finances and keeping the head in the sand, not addressing the struggles. And with the second guest coming up, we're talking about how, yes, it's important to think of retirement and our financial needs then once we're retired, but how we are both animate about making sure you live the lifestyle of your dreams already now and not just in a future that is not even certain to happen. So anyways, please subscribe and follow my podcast if you haven't yet. This way you never miss an episode and you don't miss these awesome upcoming episodes either. And if you find value in what I'm talking about here on my podcast, either solo or with my guests, please share your favorite episode with a family member or a friend, because if you find value in it, they will too. Okay, without further ado, let's dive into how to start cleaning up your financial clutter. This is a rewind of episode 122 from last April, April 2022. Enjoy. So today I want to talk about finances and financial clutter. It's tax season, so you might be all stressed out about your business finances, but this is actually the right time to make a change. So next year will be different, not so stressful. 
If you are surprised that I'm talking about finances, just a quick reminder that I'm actually qualified to talk about finances as I am a Swiss certified expert in finance and accounting. And in fact, I work in finance already since 1990, which is a staggering 32 years. And oh, yes, this ages me. <laughs> But as you know, I'm mean, not your typical bean counter, but finances are kind of the reason why I do what I do, helping people create supportive environments instead of cluttered and stressful ones. I could see it in all these years, what a difference it makes in how we work and how productive and effective we are in our work when we are organized compared to when everything is a mess and chaotic. I also noticed a correlation between a cluttered office, cluttered files, and people not having their finances in control or having cluttered finances, especially business finances. So while I talk a lot about chaotic offices, messy desks, filled to the brim computers and cell phones, I don't want you to forget that when you are doing some spring cleaning for all those areas, to not forget to clear the clutter in your finances, especially to make next year's tax season much calmer and less stressful. So as I said, it is tax season right now when I'm recording this in April 2022. And you might already be so stressed out about your finances. And my goal is definitely not to stress you out more. On the contrary, I'd love to help you feel more in control around your finances, at least from today on and into the future. So let's start. A lot of business owners that I meet are thinking that you only need to pay attention to your finances for tax reasons. You make the fact that you have to turn in a tax declaration the number one reason why finances are important. And so you only focus on your finances once a year in order to be able to file your tax return. So let's get this mental clutter out of the way first. The tax return should actually only be a side effect of your financial organization, not the main purpose of it. When you just focus on the tax return, it's like you driving a car by only looking through the rear view mirror. Let me say this again, only dealing with your finances in order to file that mandatory tax return is like driving a car by only looking through the rear view mirror. I'm sure you can totally see that this is not a safe way to drive a car and it's also not a safe way to run a business. No matter what stage your business is in. Of course, if you are just starting out and you are a solopreneur, you need a different focus on your finances and a different and different systems and routines than if you are already having a team and are a bigger company. It's still important at any stage of your business. And I would say extremely important in the beginning to have elegant clutter free finances. You want to know what's going on in your finances and feel in control. In fact, it's one of the prerequisites that you can actually grow your business and also to be able to have a team. This is not something you can outsource completely, especially not to a bookkeeper or a tax accountant, because again, most of them only look into the past. That's their job. What you as a business owner need to do is to look at the present and look into the future. Did you know that you can have a profitable business, meaning you have a profit at the end of the year, but you can still run out of cash the following year? The reason is cash flow. If you're not paying attention to cash flow and don't have a simple system set up to make sure you have a positive cash flow, meaning always enough money and then some to pay your bills, a positive bottom line might not matter. When you only focus on revenue, like so many people do, and even if you are also focusing on profit, but you don't pay attention to cash flow, you could end up in a pickle pretty quick. And that is one of the big risks when you only pay attention to your finances once a year at tax season. Have you heard of the saying, Rob Peter to pay Paul? That's what a lot of business owners are doing. They rely and depend on today's revenue to pay the bills from yesterday. You might have experienced it yourself, or you might know someone who got a tax bill, for example, and didn't have the money to pay for it. I sure do know people like that. 
many more than I would like. Because what happens now is you have to work extra hard to bring in extra revenue to be able to pay the taxes on the revenue you made last year or even further back. One big problem with that is that you will always lag behind because now you need to pay your ongoing bills. You need to pay your big tax bill from last year, which means it's hard to prevent this from happening again because you might not have the cash available to put aside for this year's taxes or even to pay this year's invoices, this, this year's expenses. In order to get out of this mess, the only way is to start paying attention to your finances every single day or at least every single week if you're just starting out. Look at the present and into the future and make sure your bills are covered today and in the future. Make sure your bills are covered with current revenue and not with future revenue. Don't rob Peter to pay Paul. There are really simple systems that you can implement that take way less time and for sure less energy than this freaking out at tax season. But most people don't do them. Also, because looking at financial clutter through the lens of clutter clearing, we realize this is a difficult category of clutter because we can't just ask ourselves the same questions we would ask ourselves about the physical clutter. Like, for example, do I love it? When did I use it last? When will I use it next? And so on. Another roadblock is a lot of people are scared of finances, but that's exactly the main reason why they have financial clutter and because it is so scary. Because they don't take charge of their finances, but leave the control to others, to their bookkeeper, to their tax accountant or don't do it at all and hide and run. It's also different from regular clutter in that if your house is full of stuff, no authority will come and tell you you have to clear your clutter and clean your house by a certain deadline. But with finances, you have the tax authority who is demanding that you file your taxes on time and they may give you an extension, but eventually you will have to do it. So you really do yourself a huge favor Remember how I say decluttering is self-love. You do yourself a huge favor to actively set up simple systems and habits to be prepared with the least stress possible for every tax season. And on top of it, you feel in control of your finances year round and your business and you will just flourish. Hiding and ignoring makes things worse and it's going to freak you out more and more and it will weigh heavier on you, which makes it very hard to really focus on your business and serving your clients to the best of your ability. You are cheating yourself, your business and your clients out of the best of you, the best version of you. So what can you do? Well, be brave and start assessing where you stand and what needs to be done. Start your journey from chaos to peace. Because no matter if you just started your business or your goal for this year is 100K. If you can't bring yourself to open up your bank statements or, or look at your bank statements or to get your taxes taken care of, or if you can't bring yourself to create an honest assessment of where you are right now financially, how do you expect to reach your revenue goals and to grow your business? If you are in pain now because of tax season, do yourself a favor and start changing it. Start taking control of your finances so next year it's going to be different. Actually, it will not just be the next tax season that's different. You will experience the benefits daily. You will feel so much more in charge and control of your business. And as a result, you will be able to serve your clients better and grow your business on a solid foundation. Back in 2016, I wrote a blog post about overcoming the fear of finances. I put the link in the show notes, but here a quick summary, and it might sound very familiar to you because it's basically my three principles for successful decluttering, but used for financial clutter. So number one in overcoming the fear of finances, you want to start small. Just as people try to take on too much when they start clearing the physical clutter in their house, be careful to not take on too much with your finances at first. Depending on where your business stands, you might only need to set up 
a daily habit for your financial files to put them where they belong, maybe five minutes at the end of the day, and maybe a 15 minute a week financial meeting with yourself. You don't have to go from zero to 100 in three seconds or less. Instead, you want to start building a solid foundation and a system that works for you and can grow together with you and your business. Starting small helps you with that. Just imagine how much more peaceful and in charge you would feel by spending just a few minutes a day or a week instead of hours and hours, if not days, at tax season. Not to talk about how much less stress and work you have to do at tax season. The second step to overcoming your fear of finances, go the route of least resistance. That's similar like when I say start with the least emotional area when starting to clear clutter. We don't want to start with the hardest part and we also want to have some quick wins. So let's start with the present. Forget the past for just a bit and start with the status of your finances today, even if it's end of April or whenever you are listening to this podcast episode. Start with the status of today. Get clear on your present financial situation and then start looking forward and start making sure your life is less stressful around finances. The third step in overcoming your fear of finances is don't try to be perfect. Because another pitfall could be to try to do it perfect from the start or try to find the perfect way to do it, the perfect system. What happens when you do that? You set yourself up for failure because again, you try to go from zero to 100 in three seconds. I am a perfectionist and I know all about this trap. It can sabotage one's progress when we try to do it right the first time. Our brains don't really work that way. When you are at the beginning of overcoming your fear of finances, this can overwhelm you to the point that you give up before you start. Besides the biggest takeaways, you can't really know yet what is perfect. Perfect for you, that is. You don't have the knowledge or experience to know what works best for you. Don't let anybody tell you that there is the perfect way or the only way to deal with your files and finances. That's simply not true. It's more important that you start and that you keep going, tweaking and shifting until it works for you and puts you in charge and control. You know you succeeded when finances are not stressful anymore. Also, the more you actually do something, the more you will automatically come up with easier ways, better ways, more time-saving ways to do it. The beginning might be a bit challenging, but it will get easier by the day. But you need to start and then you need to keep going to see what works best for you and what doesn't work for you. And if that all still sounds way too scary or you don't believe you can do it on your own, but you are so ready to make a change now, maybe because you are again all stressed out that it's tax season and you are not prepared, contact me. I can help. Opportunities to work with me one-on-one -on -one are available. You can message me on Instagram. My handle is I am Connie Graf, or you can send me an email at Connie at ConnieGraf.com or you can sign up for a complimentary Clutter Clarity consultation. And then we see if working together on your financial clutter would be a great fit. Your journey from chaos to peace starts with a few minutes a day of focusing on your files and finances. Clearing your financial clutter is definitely self-love. Okay, my friend, that's it for today. Have a beautiful and amazing week. Talk to you next time. Good care and be safe. If you enjoyed this podcast episode and you want to go on a journey from chaos to peace in your home, office, and finances with me as your guide, opportunities to work with me one on one are available. Go to conigraph.com, c o n n y g r a f.com to schedule your own personal Clutter to Clarity chat. And we will see if working together is a great fit. That is conigraph.com, C-O-N-N-Y-G-R-A-F.com.